Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Oh boy, here we go again. As of October 22, rumors started emerging that Josh Dunkley, 23-year-old Western Bulldogs midfielder, is supposedly interested in a trade that would land him at Essendon. It is believed that he will inherit a star midfielder's role at the Dons with the pitch that Essendon will also sign his younger brother Kyle, who was delisted by Melbourne earlier this year. Mark Stevens also reported that Amit Baines, Western Bulldogs CEO, has categorically denied any intention of trading their young star. There goes the reporting part. Let's get to speculating, shall we? In my previous video, I did not cover this story as the rumors were only just emerging. Now we have more reports have come out that this may be a reality. Let's have a little breakdown, shall we? Dunkley, who as of this year, appeared to play second string to Bontepelli, McRae and Libertori as the main midfield trio. Arguably, he also sits behind second year player Bailey Smith in the dog's midfield. He has also been deployed as a second ruckman at times this season under Luke Beveridge who is trying to fit as many of his quality midfielders into the first team. He has also recovered from a syndesmosis injury sustained in the round 3 clash against GWS Giants. So perhaps he was a bit underdone for the rest of the season, making his return in round 10 against Port Adelaide. It is also understood that he is best friends with Bulldogs captain Marcus Bontepelli, the Chewy to his Han if you will, the Hammer to his Nail, the Woody to his Buzz, the you get the point. So as far as trade rumors go, it is still, as of now, in the rumor stage of the trade rumor mill. Not categorical by any means, but for something to come out like this, as some people might say, where there's smoke, there's fire. Bulldogs have categorically ruled out a trade for Dunkley. However, let's conduct a little thought experiment. Let's say Dunkley is interested in joining Essendon to be their main man, with quite a pitch and a sizable offer on the table. Now the question is, what is he worth on the trade table? Bulldogs have ruled out a trade, but even if he has requested a trade, what else would the Bulldogs be expected to say? He is a contracted player for two more years with a spot in the leadership group and being a supposed best friends with captain Marcus Bontempelli. It would mean Essendon would need a significant offer for the Bulldogs management to bite at any trade. The Bulldogs probably have more leverage at the trade table with Dunkley having two more years to run on his contract. Even if he wanted to go, the Bulldogs can hold him to honour his contract. Essendon looking for a player of his type, the Western Bulldogs can ask for a hefty trade deal to be able to get it over the line. A minimum in my opinion of two first round draft picks. However, it is my opinion the Bulldogs are looking to trade in players rather than get in any first round draft picks. Especially this year. With any picks they trade in this year, they will be part of accruing enough points for Jamara Yugo Hagen and possibly Cody Rack. Looking at our midfielders, we like to start with a combination of Bontempelli, Liberatore and McRae in the middle. With the likes of Bailey Smith, Toby McLean, Patrick Lipinski and of course Josh Dunkley, you can make the argument that we have an abundance of midfielders. It was not too uncommon to see all of these players be selected for each game. So looking at who's available on Essendon's list with the obvious players we can't bring in. There are a few names that could get this deal over the line, in my opinion. Before I start, there are a few players who I believe are on Essendon's never trade table. Those are McGrath, Ridley, Draper, Shield, and Smith, who I think either are an integral part of their future team or recent trades coming in that would be looking at a trade elsewhere. There are other more experienced players, however, I doubt the dogs would see them as trade value specifically for Dunkley. I could be wrong, but these are the three players that I've identified to be fair game for this potential trade. First up, I have Aaron Francis. The key defender standing at 192 centimeters could entice the trade. Francis, who debuted the same year as Dunkley in 2016, has not gone on the park as much as him, although it was taken at pick six to Dunkley's 25 in 2015. Like Dunkley, Francis is also contracted for a further two years. He is a promising player who shows potential to be productive in a key defender role. Though he has battled with form and injury this year apparently, he is a type of player that we could potentially benefit from. With the key back trio of Keith, Cordy and Francis, it'll be a great deal for us in my opinion. But is it a great deal for Essendon? That is for Essendon's list manager Adrian Dodoro to decide on. Renowned for being a tough negotiator at the trade table. In my not so professional opinion, a straight swap could potentially happen, possibly with a later pick swap going back and forth. Next up, I have Anthony McDonald Tippin Woody. 
as small forward, leading Essendon's goal-kicking this year with 19 and is arguably Essendon's best forward asset, after Danaher leaves of course. The X-Factor he brings to games has won Essendon games in the past, but is he worthy of a straight swap for Dunkley? In my opinion, at 27, that may not be the case. Reason being he's not as consistent as he would like to be, so that has to be taken into account, but when he's on, he's really on. Essendon will argue that his match-winning ability will make up for Dunkley's midfield consistency and prowess. However, I'm not so sure that would be the case, he only averages 1.1 goals a game. Good numbers, however, I think if that were around 2 goals a game, the dogs may have a further look into this. This may be the least likely trade as I believe Tip and Woody seems to be part of Essendon's marquee players in their marketing. That is the players that are essentially part of Essendon's image put on marketing to sell tickets and memberships. You could say that what Norton and Bontepelli are to the dogs is what Tip and Woody is to Essendon. Finally we got Zach Merritt, Mercurial small midfielder. I know I said the dogs are probably looking at a forward or defender for this trade to work. However, should he be offered by the Dons, the dogs may bite as Essendon's arguably best midfielder. Being 25 years around the age profile a list is looking for, especially in the midfield. Also he would be a nice swap for Dunkley in my opinion. With Dunkley being a contested ball type, Merritt is a quality ball user. I also think should the trade happen, he could also be deployed as a forward to help out in our scoring department, which is an area our club is looking to improve in. However, I have to consider that Merritt has set a record that he will honour his 2021 contract and remain at Essendon. Also, he might not want to be played as a predominant forward, or well, God forbid, in the rough. So as of now, the trade may even be less likely than Tippin Woody's. In saying that, with some clever wording, you could also argue that Merritt himself is not seeking a trade this offseason. But does that forbid Essendon in offering him up on the trade table? should the opportunity arise. That depends how badly Essendon wants Dunkley. Ultimately, this trade may not even happen in this trade period with both clubs seemingly in a deadlock from what I can tell. Most outstandingly, Dunkley is a contracted player for another two years. For them to consider a trade, something significant must be going the other way. Only a ready-made player around their prime years or someone who is showing as much potential as Dunkley can make the dogs budge on their hard stance around the trade, in my opinion.